KCSC results came out, were announced. People did their thing, they found out their results. Um, been waiting now to get the admission letters into the various universities and colleges and uh, all the tertiary institutions. Uh, some of their choice, others not of their choice, but circumstantially they end up going there. What is it that talks about making the right choices for university? We've had this conversation before, and the lady with whom we had the conversation is back. Dr. Agnes Wahome is the CEO of the Kenya Universities and Colleges Central Placement Service. We call it COSIPS. COPS. What do you call it? COPS. Okay. <laughs> the CCCs are silent. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> COPS. Uh, no, COSIPS sounds better. COSIPS sounds <laughs> nice. Yeah, but, yes, uh, COSIPS. Anyway, make sure that the Cs are there. Yes, College <laughs> and Central. Hmm. Okay. So, COPS. How are you doing at COPS though, Dr. Wahome? <laughs> Oh, we are doing well. Yeah. A lot of changes in the way we are doing our things. Um, yes, we got the results from NEC. Mm -hmm. And in less than three weeks, we were ready with our systems uh, to get our students uh, start applying. Mm -hmm. So the speed with which we have prepared uh, this time has been uh, amazing. And we hope to get the students to know where they, they'll be placed uh, again by end of June. This is again, um, you know, record time. It has been taking months. So, you know, to calm the anxiety of Kenyans, mm -hmm. I can assure you by the time we go into the elections, everybody will be knowing where, which institution they are going into. So by end of June, yes, you'll have done it. Yes, just take us through what happens. So, NEC releases results. Okay, let's start before the before release of the results. Okay, you've gone into form four. Mm. Okay, you've gone into secondary school. Yeah. Form one and two, you choose the subjects that you want to uh, study. Yeah. So you need to already start thinking about the career because the course is uh, guided by the subjects that you do. Mm -hmm. So we start uh, career guidance from form one and two mm -hmm. on, and as we do this, we guide them on the subject selection. Then uh, from three and four, we start the discussion on your career choice. Exactly mm -hmm. what uh, career do you want to go into? Mm -hmm. Which institutions provide this training? And what are the areas of uh, employment or self-employment that you can go into mm -hmm. Mm. based on the subjects that you have been taking? And then at the same time in Form 4, we open the system for them to start making their, I would call, preliminary choices. Mm. So as they are being guided by their career teachers, then they, start, they select... Uh, the, the programs they want to go into and that's what we call the center application. Mm -hmm. So once they do this um, and they sit for the exams, the exams are out, um, we open now the system for first revision, which is what we are doing now. Okay. So there are those who made their choices while in school, at the center selection, and then they will revise in this uh, time that we are open. So we are open for two weeks for revision of those choices and for the ones who did not make their choices while in school, this would be the first time they are interacting with the system. Mm -hmm. And then um, after the, you know, we open for the two weeks, mm -hmm. then we run, we do the simulations because it's very competitive. No one goes in uh, with lower marks before somebody who had more marks than them. You know, we put in algorithms and the whole thing is uh, systems mm. uh, based. Then if you have been left out of the program you had selected, for example, uh, medicine, we have 500 places mm -hmm. and we have uh, a thousand applicants. So the 500 who are left out are given a chance to do a second selection. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we open the system again after running the simulations and we send you a message that says you did not um, 
get one of the choices that you applied for, kindly revise. So we give you that second chance and we publish the available remaining slots, slots. and courses. Exactly. Okay. Then we run it again and we do a third time. So by the time we are doing this for the third time, generally, you know, almost everybody who applied has found their place. Something I'd like to ask. Um, you say you, you look at well, the algorithm, the matrix, whatever it is that you use. You look at the marks. Mm. Is it a cluster that you look at? Do you look at subjects? Do you look at the key subjects? Do you, uh, is there a cutoff point? Mm -hmm. mm. I started off by saying when we are guiding them, the form one and two, we guide them on the subject selection, yep. linking that with the certain career yes so we look at what are the requirements for a program um, medicine the subjects required for this uh, biology chemistry maths and a language mm. in most cases english where you need to get a b now how come they, in my time they wanted people to pass physics as well <laughs> <laughs> now physics is if you're doing engineering mm. and uh, computer science so we guide them because you find there are schools that will find it. Uh, uh, I would give an example of a school where I went and I asked, how many of you want to do to be engineers? And these are form fours. Mm. And they, being a boys' school, they all had their hands up. <laughs> yep. And I asked, how many of you are taking physics <laughs> as your subject? None. None of them was taking physics. Yeah, so that's the kind of thing we are trying to deal with. Mm. You know what you want to be? Start very early by getting the right subjects mm. and knowing where to put more effort, which subjects mm. you need to put more effort. Because some students will say, I want to be an engineer. But you don't realize you still have to have a language. Yeah. So you will they don't pay much attention to, to the language to the right. languages so this kind of uh, you know it's quite interesting so this, this takes place yes. in high school mm. yes. during your years in secondary school that's when you get and that's the importance of the career guidance yes. in school yes so that you know the subjects to select by the time you're going into form three you are already within the proper cluster of subjects exactly and then so, now so uh -huh. those are the cluster subjects mm -hmm. was, uh, based on his question. Mm. So that gives you the cluster subjects for every course. Some have four subjects, some have two subjects, some just require you to have a C plus okay. as your mean. So now uh, when you select, we also look at the available capacity. We work with the universities to ask them to declare how many spaces do you have for each program mm -hmm. now we get uh, to engage with the commission for university education because they are in charge of looking at the quality mm. of education so a university says i can take a thousand students for this program mm. commission comes in and says no you have the resources and, um, you know, you can only handle 600. Mm -hmm. So they do that quality assurance. And we get that data from them. You know, once the university tells us, I want a thousand, we go to the commission and commission gives us the proper validated, we say the validated capacity. So we put that in the system. So in our system, we have the results and we have the capacities mm -hmm. and we just let them roll. Mm. compete so we are looking at uh, as the system is uh, doing the selection it looks at the students performance in that subject against the overall performance of all the students who did the subject wow okay so that um, gives you your cluster weight okay and this cluster weight, that's your performance in those subjects against the national performance. Um, now, this is in, in, I would say, for example, you get a cluster weight looking at four 
subjects for medicine, mm -hmm. you end up with a cluster weight of 43.001. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Right. And another one gets 43.000. So they start competing on this on just that point, point zero zero one. Exactly. That's how precise the system is. Wow. You know? And some people say, Oh, you know, they come and tell me, Masi, my child had forty three point um this. Can we just round off? <laughs> yeah, I mean to the next. I mean. But it's it's that competitive. It's that competitive. Mathematics when we were in class. Yeah. We learned how to do the round, rounding off. But I'm sorry, we can't round off human beings. <laughs> you, <laughs> you can't. Three and a half. It is done. It's three it's, and a half. It didn't, no. And even point zero zero one. one. Surely you're yeah. rounding off to the next what? Two words come to mind here. Yeah. As you're talking about this. Moderation, standardization. Mm -hmm. Does it feature? Mm-mm. At what point does it feature in the system? Not when they get to you. What about the point at which papers are being examined? You know, I'm talking about what we do. There is no moderation. There is no standardization. What you get is what you it. have. What you receive is what you deal with. Yes. yes. What happened before then? It happened before then. I, I will not talk on what happened. You won't even dare? <laughs> no. No, if, no, no, no. Um, uh, doctor, if you were to compare, when you first opened the system mm -hmm. and the number of students, be they in Form 4 before their final exams start to make their selections, because you said they are, they're allowed to do that. Mm -hmm. yes. After the results come out, you open the system again. What's the percentage or what are the, what's the difference in numbers between those who apply while they are still in school and those who wait until after they've seen the results of their exams to then imply, uh, apply? Um, a lot of students, I would say 90% say, let me see what I get first. Mm. I understand, I appreciate, but uh, let's see how things uh, turn out. So mm -hmm. there is that... Uh, apathy of you know wanting to make a choice before uh, you know what you will get mm. yeah and what's the encouragement from where you sit with what you're dealing with right now mm. of those who've all finished their kcp and waiting for placement later uh, to start university later on in the year mm. what would be the preference at the placement uh, platform Pre our preference would be if they can make these choices while in school because, you know, once you do it when you're in school, you have an opportunity of uh, engaging with your career guidance to take you through, mm. you know, the, the system and how it works. Mm. So you are well guided at the school level. And once the results are out, nobody is, uh, you know... You nobody all, blocks you from nobody blocks you from revising that mm. but you you already start looking and you familiarize yourself with the system basically what you want is for people to know the system before they have to actually deal with the system yes but there is also something else mm. once these students get out of school they seem to just have forgotten that that uh, a time will come when they have to <laughs> make these choices so there are those who just don't apply yeah. We have to go looking for them through the schools. You know, we are looking at the system and we see there's a, a pattern of a, you know, a school that uh, students have not applied. So we call the principal, please look for your students and let them students. apply. So the school is a better place to get all this coordinated than now, you know, we, may, we make announcements, we, we go around, we send our officers. Mm. But once these students are not in a school setup. You see, even access to the portal, access to internet, access to all this time and information, it varies. Mm -hmm. If we look at, uh, I just want to look at things in totality. How many, in total, university slots do we have for all courses? university level currently we have 207,000 that's 207,000 mm -hmm. available university slots for the various different courses the, yes and, and and at the end of like 
in this year's KCSE, how many qualified with university entry grades? We had uh, 145, but 144,000, uh, I think 600 are Kenyans. Mm -hmm. yep. So we have more slots than the number of students who've actually qualified for university. Exactly. And we now, even beyond this, we have uh, the colleges, the tertiary yes, colleges. Yes, we have the tertiary colleges that, mm. uh, and we are encourage students who make it to the university, the C mm. plus and above, to also consider. So Another uh, question, sorry, City. Yes. In the center application, this is the application before KCSE, mm -hmm. how many people apply um, for this particular year? This particular year, we had uh, out of 10,000 centers, we had about 2,000 applying. So you only had 2,000 people who have applied? No, no, sent schools. Out, out of the yeah. well, 2,000 schools? Yeah, this would give uh, you uh, slightly less than 100,000 students. About, no, slightly less than 2,000, 200,000 students. It was 100 and something. Okay. Mm -hmm. Which is still not good. I would, it's not good You'd at still all. still want more because you're talking about 200,000 out of a million. Well, 800. About 800,000 mm -hmm. uh, form for candidates. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We are talking about uh, uh, less than a quarter. Okay. Mm -hmm. I, I, I hear these numbers. Mm -hmm. Um... And I can understand, I mean, the last couple of times we've spoken with you, I mean, looking at, obviously, there really isn't enough for everybody to go around. I mean, and that's what we are looking at right now, that we will be in a situation whereby we have more numbers in terms of humans mm -hmm. than there are spaces uh, for entry into university. So what is then the encouragement if there's not enough space? And is this now the recommendation for, you know, Tivets and things like that. No, we have enough space. There are more spaces we than those that have qualified. We have more spaces mm -hmm. than the, the students who have qualified. Mm. And I think it's a good problem. Okay, mm. that's a good problem yeah. then, yes. That's a good problem. Yeah. Uh, but uh, <laughs> with a disclaimer, please, we are not saying that everybody who got C plus and above should sure. go to the university. Mm -hmm. Because um, if I look at the the, the Tibet programs that yeah. we have. Mm -hmm. We have uh, engineering, for example, uh, a diploma in mechanical engineering. Mm -hmm. If that student who really wanted to do engineering but ended up with a C, is unlikely, C plus, is unlikely that they will go in mm -hmm. as a government sponsored okay. because they need to compete with the A's. Yep. So if they still have the maths, and physics, they can start at diploma level, then proceed to a uh, degree and still be registered in this country as engineers. Okay. Yeah. Can, I, can I take a, a step back? Mm -hmm. This example that you've also given about going to this school and hearing from these young men that uh, they obviously have not taken the prerequisite, prerequisite course for this <laughs> next course that they want to take appears to be a problem. And uh, knowing that students should be working with their career counsellors, for example, or their guidance counsellors in terms of this selection, then does your office insist on that connection between the student and the, the counsellor, the guidance? Because it kind of doesn't make that you want to do a course like engineering, for example, and you're not taking on the physics, even if you didn't know. By the time you had the sit down with said person, then they should have been able to look through and say, well, if you want to go into engineering in your next one year or so, or two years or three years, because this is at form one, form two level, mm -hmm. then physics amongst your subject clusters must have been lined up. Mm -hmm. So that means there's, there's some commun lack of communication or lack of knowledge or awareness at that sense. Yeah. Or what do you see to be the problem? Because it then has a direct impact mm -hmm. on the placement. Yes. Um, the gap here was when the teacher doesn't also understand. Mm. So we have a, a program for career teachers where we train as COOPs. One of our responsibilities is to train these teachers. Mm -hmm. So we have a very vibrant uh, program for teachers. But we are looking at it that uh, moving forward, we don't want a situation where the teacher is already in 
uh, practice mm -hmm. and they're having to go back to learn these things. Mm -hmm. We want it to be part of the training. When a teacher is training at the college, mm -hmm. then they, they are getting these skills. And as mm -hmm. we speak, we have a team uh, s working in Naivasha as we speak mm -hmm. with the PS uh, curriculum development. This is Professor Fatuma Chege mm -hmm. that are working on a career handbook. We've had a career uh, book for uh, the current system, mm -hmm. but we are working on one for the CBC because this now will start at uh, grade seven. The, the, the class that is now doing their exam mm -hmm. this year, this is grade six. So they will be going into grade seven and we are preparing the handbook that will be used uh, by the teachers who will be teaching this uh, classes and also for parents uh, to understand. So it will be a handbook that is part of the books that... that the, oh, that you actually okay. get uh, into yeah. junior secondary with. Once you get into junior secondary, uh, the teacher must provide career guidance as a prerequisite. Mm. Yeah, so we are, we are working both... Uh, and I think the most... Um, you know, what I'm seeing as a, a, a space that will be very interesting is how do we get the parents to also understand? That's a tough one. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about that after the break. Mm -hmm. This is the Situation Room, the only way to start your day. Masiwa Home, the CEO of the Kenya Universities and Colleges Central Placement Service, COOPS. We're talking about <laughs> university <laughs> and colleges selection. Yeah, yeah, we'll get there. When you're in the room, yeah. Scoops. Scoops. Yeah. Scoops becomes scoops. <laughs> Something I wanted to ask, yes. if I may. The 207,000 spaces, mm -hmm. are they in public universities or just all universities? In all uh, universities, 70 universities. Private and public. Pub private and public. Yeah. We have more than 70 universities in mm -hmm. the country, but the option to take government uh, sponsored students is left the university. So we have universities that have opted not to be part of the program. Mm. This is uh, Strathmore, USIU, Aga Khan, and others. So the 70, uh, 39 in public mm. and 31 private. Uh, private. Yes. Okay. You mentioned something just we went to the break and looking at the involvement of parents in these elections, mm -hmm. for me, seems to be at the very crux of the matter because we have a lot of declarations by parents. Look, I want my child to follow in the family line of the great legal, um, you know, uh, expertise brains. or the great uh, <laughs> legal brains, as you've mm -hmm. said, or the great medical doctors that have existed. And we find that a lot of times, a lot of pressure for selection for students comes from their parents mm -hmm. without realizing that they may be making truly a wrong choice in terms of what they want to do later yeah. because of this pressure that comes from parents. So here where you are saying that the manual then has been created whereby teachers will learn um, and then they will also be trained moving forward. What happens to this huge influence on this election by parents and training for them to realize really what part or what role they play in all of this? Uh, part of the CBC is also working on parents, mm -hmm. you know, changing the attitude of parents. And uh, we are already seeing that when parents are engaged in what the children are doing, you know, the children are going home with assignments that... Uh, they are supposed to engage. What? The parents are supposed to engage. I'm telling you, yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know why we laugh? This CBC, this CBC is not just taking the students to school. It's taking the parents to school as well. And I think it's good because it gets the parents to engage with the child, know your child. Now, um, the focus of CBC is actually helping this child to develop their competencies mm. what am i good at mm. what is my talent so how do you just leave that responsibility to the teacher and not the parent when you give an assignment to this child and they have to get, work it with the parent mm. the parent actually starts um identifying alongside the teacher what this uh, 
child is good at is or good have at. good interest in so we are just at the formative years you know we are we are dealing with the the, the first ones up to grade 6 mm. so as we go to grade 7 8 and we start talking about career guidance they will now not engage with the matope and everything mm. they will be at the level where they will be engaging on on careers yep and having that discussion with their students, with their children. So, you know, I, I think... Um, it's, it's a journey, but it's, it's a, a journey that we're getting there. And I and think like it's, saying, it's a journey in the right direction. I th a lot of responsibility had been left to the, to the teachers. Mm. And the teacher is able to know this child clearly cannot do a certain program. Mm. But when now the results are out, you find that, and the student has performed very well. Like uh, she said, you already start saying, this is the, the path I want you to take. Mm. And you have no clue what, their interest, what yeah. their interest is. The teacher knows the child more than you do. Yeah. That's where we are moving away from. Mm. Yeah. I, know I, was laughing. I was just remembering our story was given last week of somebody's experience with CBC. Went to a wedding, uh, she saw as are being served. So this lady and her husband looked at each other, you know, knowingly, they give each other those glancing looks and knowing looks. We need to collect these bottle tops mm -hmm. because we know what's <laughs> coming. <laughs> so people leave weddings, people are carrying bottle tops, somebody else is carrying the cake box. <laughs> but isn't that... You throw nothing away anymore. <laughs> but isn't that nice? Mm. You know... Hey, surely. Because as a parent... Becomes at other people's weddings. No, no. As a parent, you start to realizing, one, you have to keep the environment clean. Uh -huh. You start thinking about recycling, you know. So there's learning that's happening in both... You know, at the, both, the, ends. both ends. Both ends. <laughs> um, but... To be honest, I think we are in the right direction. Okay. 844, the, cons the whole idea at the beginning was, uh, that was the, the idea. And I'm a proud uh, product of 844. Mm. But we lost it somewhere. Mm. Became commercial. Yeah. So uh, we are just going back where we had planned, what, where we had intended. You know, the thinking behind the 844 system was actually, as you correctly put it, it was excellent. Yeah. Yes. And if CBC is taking us in the direction that we didn't quite get to, mm -hmm. it's a good thing. But there's something that puzzles me. Mm -hmm. When we talk about uh, the C plus and above grade, that actually is a basic requirement for getting into university or colleges. Mm -hmm. I understand. I also understand that people can get to a point, you can go to a college, uh, you can actually uh, enroll for some courses that can enable you to do courses that previously you couldn't do. Mm -hmm. However, in this country, there's something peculiar that I've noticed. Mm. When people apply for jobs, they want your primary school certificate and your secondary school certificate. Mm -hmm. And there are certain job requirements that start with your secondary school qualifications. Mm. Mm -hmm. So if you, start, if you got a C- minus or you got a D, and then you upgraded and did other things and got that degree, that degree doesn't count. They still go back to that D that you got in mm. Form 4. How exactly do you deal with this situation you know we have uh, from now not at, as a career advisor and as a ceo mm -hmm. i can tell you when we are recruiting and we see a candidate who has walked that journey mm -hmm. from certificate diploma mm -hmm. especially in some jobs like ict mm -hmm. you already start seeing competence mm -hmm. from a certificate, a diploma, degree, and we tend to pay more attention to that one than the person who left. Went directly to direct. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So show something about their character as well. Exactly that resilience. Mm. So uh, employers are different, but I can tell you at Coops. Mm. We really have uh, respect for that person who has, because we understand the system, we understand by the time this person is moving the different steps, they know what they are doing. Mm -hmm. And like that one who just got grades into the university, and when you interview these two uh, people, you actually pick a lot of differences. Mm -hmm. You, you know, see, you pick a, some level of maturity, they could be at the same age, but that one has who has moved... Um, is more mature 
confident and uh, has a lot of hands-on experience. Mm-hmm. I agree completely. I mean, mm-hmm. the, the logic behind asking for someone's uh, certificate of primary education papers and uh, their form four, I, I understand it very well. It's not mm-hmm. I don't understand it. Mm-hmm. I do. Mm-hmm. But then there in learning, there are those you call late bloomers. Mm-hmm. There are people who may not seem to do well in primary and secondary because mm-hmm. they are otherwise engaged with more important things like playing instead of actually studying. Okay, yes. Yes. but when they actually bloom and blossom, mm-hmm. they are a wonderful sight to behold. Yeah. Now I am arguing this: Does our system really take care of this? Because the end product at the end of the day, even if you're qualified, you need to be able to do something with it, and that takes us to the employer. Mm-hmm. Yes. And there is an issue there. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you said beautiful things and then no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yes, uh, the employer looks at that and uh, it's unfortunate. But I believe employers are people who have done, have studied, studied human behavior. Mm. We hope. Yes, HR professionals study human behavior. And they we should ag- be able again, to again we argue hope. From, <laughs> from that perspective. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I, I want us to go back to placement. Please. Please. So we are talking of university, but I want to focus a little more on the, on the colleges. The, the, the colleges. Mm-hmm. Because we have students who get E. And they could be those that you're talking about. Mm-hmm. And um, unfortunately, we tend to, you know, just look at them as failures. Mm. Anybody who got an E, really, mm. they're Not seen wasted. as, uh, they wasted, you know, an to a ngombe mm. and everything. Mm-hmm. But this, uh, you know, we have seen them come out to be very interesting people. Mm. Last week, I was in... Uh, Kiandutu with the CS. And as we were going round, I met this gentleman and, uh, you know, the, the, the local chief actually. And we were telling him, please help us get these students who did Form 4 and they got E's and D's and they feel like their, their life is over mm. because they can be sponsored by government to do the Tibet courses. And he said, you know what? My son did plumbing mm-hmm. and now he's working in Botswana. You know, mm-hmm. so it means we can even export uh, labor. Labor, mm-hmm. and this is the D and the E uh, student. A student, but can be skilled. Yes. Okay. And they get how many slots? Now that we talked about two hundred seven thousand mm-hmm. university slots, how many slots do you have for colleges and tivets? We have uh, about three hundred and fifty thousand. Okay, three hundred and fifty k. Uh, yes. Now these are the uh, colleges, uh, mainly under the Ministry of Education, mm-hmm. the national polytechnics like Sigalagala, um, Garissa. But we have colleges that are outside of the Ministry of Education mm-hmm. um, that we are placing the Kenya Mass Communication. Mm-hmm. Kenya Wildlife, Marine Academy mm-hmm. in uh, Mombasa. Um, we have the Italy. KRA, the, mm-hmm. the, the mm-hmm. one run by KRA. You mm. just talked about KRA. Yeah, so um, 190 uh, institutions, uh, these 300,000 are in the 190 institutions that. Uh, Coops is working with okay. and will really encourage more ministries. Yeah. We have Ken- Water Institute, yeah. uh, we have in uh, Utali. We would love to place in KMTC because we get a lot of inquiries. Mm-hmm. So we encourage other ministries to have their colleges on our platform mm-hmm. to, to encourage, uh, even to help the students know what is out there. How far does it, I mean, <clears throat> Excuse me. How far then do you go beyond encouraging other ministries mm-hmm. in terms of putting this communication out there? Because this is a brilliant story you've given of this gentleman who, you know, studied plumbing and now gets a job in Botswana. Uh, the other day I was telling the guys about uh, a, a fellow that I met who works in the Netherlands and he was here on holiday and he's a painter. Mm-hmm. I'm not talking about exotic Mona Lisa painting. Mm-hmm. I mean, he paints houses. 
yeah. right? Mm. For, for a living. Mm. And is able to then come on holiday every year kind of thing. So it's not the menial labor that you talked about that people would normally look down upon. Yeah. So these things are possible. And so that story that you've given about a Kenyan who has been able to do this. So then how far does your communication go beyond the placement? And say, look, guys, the career is very possible with you attending these <coughs> colleges and mastering a skill mm -hmm. and then because you're educated yeah. probably many would argue probably sk better skilled because you're into the nitty-gritty than somebody who's gone through a university course right yeah. so is it more than just encouraging other ministries to place their colleges on the platform or saying look guys yeah apply for these courses let us place you here mm -hmm to gain these skills because there's a promise of a, of a fulfilling career. Yes, uh, we do that. Um, we've been working very closely with the Marine Academy in Mombasa. You remember we had a big conference on the blue economy. Mm -hmm. So from that time, we realized as COOPS, there, a, there are opportunities that we have not explored in this country. Mm. So we engaged and uh, actually drew out uh, uh, an MOU with Marine Academy. So we've gone there, we've looked at the courses, we've marketed them, you know, for, for the institution. Um, we have interviewed the students who have been there so that they are, they encourage other students. And I can tell you today, Marine Academy uh, is a different place. There is the face of Kenya mm. in that institution because before they just had the, you know, locals. Locals apply. Yeah. Because only the locals knew of exactly. the existence of this college. Exactly. Right. So now it has, a, it's a vibrant place mm -hmm. with, uh, a mixture of uh, Kenyans, but interesting still is that the the, the companies that go there asking for uh, trained staff, mm. mm -hmm. the college still can't satisfy the demand. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. as we conclude the conversation today, so what are the current steps? You said after the KCSE results were released, you opened the portal for the first revision for two weeks. Mm -hmm. Are those two weeks over? Uh, up to 2nd of June. Up to the 2nd of June. We close on 2nd of June. Mm -hmm. Then we will run the simulations for a week. Then open for another week for second revision. Simulate for a week. Open again. And by June, end of June, um, before the 30th of June, mm everyone will have known where they've been placed. So this is the time for people who did their KCSE to go onto the portal. And if you'd like to select a new course based on the outcome yes. of your exams, you can do that now. KCSE 2021 class for university. Mm. But tw KCSE from the year 2000 to 2021 for uh, diploma certificate and artisan courses. Does everybody know what this portal is? Mm. <laughs> yes, I can <laughs> say. <laughs> yeah, um, you know, our students are very uh, tech savvy now. Wait, these are yes. the ones only 100,000 applied. No, 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 no. There are no, 700,000 no. who I can did not tell interact you, with this system. No, when, when we open the system after the results mm. the picture is very different we How many? we get actually last year mm. the ones with c plus and above we had 97 percent apply okay yeah so they know how to so access it yes and the tvet ones also and then we have centers we have our huduma centers mm. uh, countrywide that are out there uh, supporting the students we have the institutions the training institutions themselves uh, assign officers who uh, help the students apply so they can go into any institution, mm -hmm. a diploma, university, and they will get assistance on how to apply. Okay. But uh, I, we are now looking at the cybers within the, career, uh, within the Huduma centers. We know a lot of our students apply through cybers. Mm -hmm. So we are working now with cybers countrywide to ensure that they have... Uh, the skills they understand on how to do this, which is also an employment for the for the cybers, the ci young people in the cybers. How long should it take? How long should the process take from logging in to doing your thing to submitting? 
it should take you at most 10 minutes. But you know, unfortunately, our Kenyans, they wait until the last minute. Definitely. And they keep asking, yeah. oh, what wana funga lini? Oh, what wana funga lini? <laughs> and they jam the system on the last day. Just like KRA. Yeah? Mm. So I don't know what we'll do about That's that. That's called the deadline. <laughs> we wait for the deadline. Wait for the deadline and ask for another one. <laughs> so we should keep shortening that mm. period. Mm. Yeah, yeah and, and knowing then, that you will extend it. That's oh, the no, 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 no. <laughs> I can assure you mm. from 2nd of June, we are not extending. Mm. We close, simulate. Mm. If you don't do it in the first round, you will wait for the second. Uh, mm. Yeah. No extension. Uh, no, no, no. no extension. You will essentially wait till next year. So no, if you <laughs> for university, okay. you go to module two. Yeah. Thank you very much for joining us this morning. Come again soon <laughs> and let's have these conversations. <laughs> Dr. Agnes Wahome is the CEO of the Kenya Universities and Colleges Central Placement Service, COOPS. Yeah. Hey. Thank you. Thank you for having me in the studio.